Hello everyone, welcome back to another video um, and I'm uh, cooking this evening. Behind me is my mess. <laughs> I wanted to start the video off by talking a little bit about food, nutrition. Um, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I know I don't talk about it a lot, but I'm gonna talk about it right now. Now this isn't sponsored, okay, so don't type comments, but I do wanna shout this out because it's worth sharing, okay? So obviously nutrition's a big part of cycling, it's a big part of your life in general, isn't it, right? I mean, food in general. Um, now, the last four, five months, we've been ordering uh, Gusto boxes, which is basically a box shows up in your door, it's full of food, full of ingredients that you then put together and make a meal. I have ordered so many boxes that we have like a million recipe cards right here, okay? I, I don't have to order another Gusto box, I could just redo any one of these recipes that we enjoyed, of which there are plenty. Like tonight, we're making chicken tikka naan with Indian style salad and mint yogurt. Literally prep, 10 minutes. The awesome bit though is that down here, it gives me the uh, calorie breakdown and the macronutrients and the protein and well everything else you need to know obviously helps me plan the day so if you want to grab yourself an author on this because they do offer like um you know click on the code and you can share it with people i'll put a link down below and you can i think you can save like 70 percent off or something like your first couple of orders or whatever i don't know but Maybe if you want to try it, like order a couple like for a month or so and then reuse the cards. I'm just saying because like the food is awesome. You have vegan options, vegetarian options, like high protein options. Yeah, I'm just I'm just sharing. Sharing's caring. That's what we've been doing for food recently in the evenings. So yeah. Uh yeah, I don't know how to end this segment. <laughs> Good morning. I have all of my ride food ready and prepared for today. I thought I would lay it out to make it look all pretty for you. Uh, I'm waiting on some uh, more supplies to come in while I train for Battle on the Beach. I'll do a proper announcement on that shortly to give you more information on what exactly that is. So today's ride is going to be about four hours long. I'm going to attempt to do a, a big block of threshold work and I'm fueling accordingly. So I'm going to warm up for an hour go straight into the threshold block and then just kind of ride around for the last two hours uh, and enjoy the sunshine. So I've got two bottles, may stop and refill, but we have a small bottle, a large bottle. I'm gonna fill the small bottle with uh, some 90 mix, so 90 grams of carbs. Um, so I'll try and drink that in the hour that I'm working hard in. Any top up during that hour, I'll have uh, an extra 30 here in this gel, so there could be 120 grams of carbs in that hour. And then, some of these bars, these are just go-ahead fruit and oat bakes. 25 grams of carbs per bar, virtually nothing else, so they are pretty quick, pretty small. Uh, I can grab a handful, um, and I'll probably have two an hour in the last two hours, so that's like 50 grams of carbs, uh, as the work rate will massively drop off. Um, so yeah, and a spare gel, just in case. <laughs> Lovely day. Okay, wrapping up this one hour of riding out to the road I'm gonna use as my warmer. I haven't done any efforts in this hour. When I'm riding for an hour to get to the start of the effort, Anything like rounds or ones or two is totally fine for me to get like warmed up because any other effort and I'm starting to detract potentially from what I'm trying to do specifically today. That might differ in another workout, but today it's just riding to the start or to the road that I'm gonna use. The only thing I probably do is get myself used to riding in an aero position drops, hoods, because an FTP effort, or around that effort, will generally have you training for like a breakaway effort or time trial or something similar. So I just try to get in that mode so that when I get into the effort, you know, I'm ready to get the position in. So four by 10 minutes uh, threshold intervals. Two and a half minutes of recovery between. I wish I had my chest mount today so I could actually show you 
how undulating this road is, which is... Well, it's not a problem, but it's that practice you need when the road starts to go down. You need to keep on top of the gear. And that's where the skill of, I guess, producing the power outdoors comes in. Like, it'll soon come back to me. It's all muscle memory, but... One thing I should mention, like at the minute I'm working on FTP, time to exhaustion and uh, efficiency factor. Tr I'm tracking those things and seeing where they go over the next three or four weeks. So when it comes to a workout like this, it's actually, it's never about producing more power or trying to produce more power. If you're feeling good or if you're progressing, it's all about stretching it out rather than doing more power because more power just means you're training something else. It's really, when it comes to threshold, sweet spot, all that kind of area, it's all about going longer per se. So I'm gonna knuckle down to these last three. I'll catch up with you afterwards. For the sake of anybody watching who's going through something similar to me, i.e. coming back from injury or illness, you have to be patient with your body. Like, today is a hard session, but I know that if I do it right and I knuckle down, I just do it, do it to the best of my ability, even if I don't hit the numbers, which you know, I'm about 10, 20 watts off. We're still collecting data, and when you're coming back from illness or injury, you've got to put it into perspective that you're not going to be as fit potentially as you were two, three, four weeks ago. But it'll soon come back in another four weeks, you know, you just got to give it that time. But yeah, I'm going like really hard, and I'm just about scraping over 300 watts, so. It's a big punch in the face by reality, but I'm enjoying it and it's gonna make us stronger for sure. Boom, happy days. Block is done. With a session like this, it's always good to look at it later to see how you manage to, uh, to ride over all the efforts when you're working like this. And I, I touched upon it earlier about and trying to keep your power smooth. If you are doing it on an undulating course, you've gotta be really careful about not like punching. Um, you know, because if your power drops on the on the slight declines, you wanna you don't wanna be punching up like another rise, like because then you'll just end up doing like over and unders. Which you know, if that's on the plan, you know, no problem. They're a great way uh, to improve your lactate threshold. Uh, but if you do a steady state, and obviously like try and be aware of that. So maybe starting on the turbo trainer because. You know, you can always keep an eye on it a lot easier there. Uh, and then move into a flat road outside or a circuit uh, where you do laps. And then maybe progress onto, you know, something like I've done today, which is, a, you know, an undulating course. You know, a session like this on paper will always look daunting. You know, four by 10 minutes around your, your threshold power, a very, very small rest in between. You know, and if it does daunt you, you know, sometimes it's a good thing because, you know, maybe you wouldn't necessarily push yourself that much, you know, in one block like that. You know, I'm monitoring my time to exhaustion. You know, it's all about gathering the data. So, you know, that was a 40 to 50 minute effort if you come to two and a half minute rests. Um, and I'm trying to like push out my time to exhaustion. So stretch it beyond what it might be. You know, for some people, you might only be able to hold threshold power for like, you know, 30 minutes maybe. So maybe you start off by doing three by 10 with short rest and then working it out, working it out, working it out until you're able to do four by 15 or maybe even more than that. Some people five by 20, you know, it sounds crazy, but eventually probably you might get there. <laughs> it's just one of those things that, you know, we need to sometimes dedicate time to if that's what you're trying to do. You know, and this session wasn't supposed to be easy today either. You know, obviously compounding the fact that I don't really know what my FTP is currently because of, uh, you know, I'm currently about a week and a half back into riding again. You know, the first two or three should feel relatively comfortable. You know, nothing like really extreme. I mean, obviously riding at your lactic threshold is going to hurt, isn't it? But, you know, it shouldn't really be killing you, but once you get that final block, I mean, if you're doing it right, you know, it really does, you know, you really do feel like you're getting right to the end of your tether, so to speak. But there's lots of factors that come into how you feel on the day, you know. Nutrition helps that I nailed 
that today. Um, sleep, heck, you know, sleep's a big one. I know lots of people are functioning on five hours of sleep and I know maybe they can't help it, but it all adds up to be honest. Just pulled over with uh, about an hour left of this ride to show you what is probably one of the best views um, of, the, of the coastline where, where I live. Um, you can see the Gower Peninsula, this house behind me. Uh, can you imagine waking up to this view every morning? There's another house there. Check it out. It is an amazing view of Worms Head, somewhere the other side of these ridges. But that's the end of the Gower down there. And that is the Gower and the Lucker Estuary. It is pretty spectacular. Well, that's going to wrap up today's ride. First proper session, ticked off, chuffed with it, happy to progress now. Motivating, motivating.